All right, so in terms of our ATP production okay, by ourselves, that's the big piece we're going to go in for the remainder of this module. And it's one of the big principles, so make sure you follow along. Now, if we describe the term, if we describe the term metabolism, our metabolism, we use that term all the time, our metabolism is basically all of the chemical reactions within our body. Now, sometimes those chemical reactions are building reactions. We call those synthesis reactions. We call, also call them anabolic reactions. But sometimes they are decomposition reactions, or we tear them down, and so we call them catabolic reactions. Now, as it comes to energy, to get things to form, to take small molecules and to make big molecules, okay, so anabolic reactions, we have to put energy in. When we, but then the advantage we have is when we break those molecules down, we get energy out. So when we use the terms endergonic and exergonic, endergonic means we put more energy in than we got out. So we did a building process, anabolic. So when we make ATP, uh, that's endergonic. We put energy in to make the ATP. But when we break it, when we break that bond, then we get more energy out than we put in. There we, therefore, we call that a catabolic reaction or an exergonic reaction. So we're saying, here's the reactants of my chemical reaction, and I put a certain amount of energy in to form those products. And I got more energy in, I put more in, or I supplied more energy than I got out. Here, I start with my reaction. I took a little bit to make the reaction happen, but notice, yeah, I got a lot more energy out than I put in. And so we're constantly doing that. And so if we look at ATP for an example, okay, there's two different ways that we can have this, this reaction proceed. So if I have ATP, and I'm going to put my arrows this way, and in chemistry, we, whenever you see arrows like that, you know it's a reversible reaction. That reaction can go to the right, or that reaction can go to the left. And our products, if we're proceeding to the right, would be ADP plus P, because we broke one of the phosphates off. This is adenosine triphosphate. This is adenosine diphosphate. We'll see this in another graphic here in just a minute. Um, and then plus the energy we released. And so if that equation proceeds to the right, we're releasing energy. So therefore, it's catabolic and exergonic because we're releasing more energy, getting more energy out than we put in. If that equation proceeds to the left, that means we're putting more energy in we're also putting little molecules together to get a big molecule, so that would be endergonic, more energy in, as well as anabolic um, in terms of that we did a building process. So make sure you can make the distinction as we, as we talk about those types of reactions. Now, I mentioned earlier when we talked about active transport, pay very close attention to the direction of the arrow so you know what's happening. So here, in relation to what I was just referring to, here we had ATP, our energy-containing molecule, okay, our spendable cash is what we're going to kind of refer to it as, and notice the arrow goes this way. So I know that I'm breaking ATP to get ADP plus P, and so I'm taking energy from this molecule, and I am transferring it okay, to other molecules to facilitate some building reactions, some anabolic reactions. So I can take glucose and make glycogen. I can take amino acids and make proteins. I can make fatty, take fatty acids and glycerol and form triglycerides. So all I'm doing to form these molecules is I'm transferring the energy okay, from this molecule, ATP. But when I break these, product, these molecules down, so I break down glycogen and I break down proteins and I break down triglycerides, now I can take that energy and I can transfer it to ADP plus P and form ATP. So this would be forming molecules coming here on the right side would be forming molecules in our body okay, and storing sugar and making proteins and storing triglycerides, storing our fats, versus over here is where I'm, going to, where I'm going to use them for energy and break them down. Now notice in both of those situations that these are, and I'm going to use another term, exothermic reactions. They are heat releasing reactions. So why when you, with part of your metabolism, why do you why does your body become warmer? Yeah, because those are exothermic reactions. You're releasing heat through that through that process. It, it's just like in your car when you burn when you burn fuel. You know, you're, and the the problem is your cars aren't very efficient in terms of how they burn fuel. Okay, even if you have a hybrid or whatever, they're not as efficient as they as they potentially hopefully will be. But 
a normal gasoline burning car is only about 30 percent efficient. What we mean by that is of the potential energy we put in of the fuel, it only gets about 30 percent of the energy gets actually used in the car. The rest is given off as heat. Well, we're not very efficient either. Of the actual fuel we put into our body, a smaller percentage than what we would like is actually used for energy, and we give off heat. Okay? And that's some of the heat we have to deal with from a thermal regulatory standpoint. So notice we kind of have an hourglass appearance in our diagram here, that we essentially take the foods we take in, okay, the proteins and the carbohydrates and the lipids. Now, I think to fit okay, the traditional American diet, I think probably the carb line ought to be a little bit wider in this graphic and the proteins smaller and maybe the lipids about the same size as carbs, but you kind of get the idea of what we're referring to. Okay, so we take the proteins, carbs, and lipids, break them down into our building blocks, use them to produce ATP. So the question is, can we do we use carbs for energy? Yeah, it's our primary, our first energy source. Can we use proteins? Yes. Okay, we prefer not to. We prefer to use those in our body for protein structures. Um, but can we use fats? Yes, we do. And between meals, we do that. We'll describe it a little bit. So we can use an energy, but we can also reverse those reactions then and build molecules out of those building blocks. Okay, so we're always transferring energy to and from molecules as we build things, anabolic, and as we tear things down, catabolic. So it's a relationship we want to make sure we understand. Now one of the relationships that maybe helps with this is kind of looking at that releasing of energy or that um, exergonic reactions. If you look when we actually burn something okay, from the standpoint of, okay, using fire, okay, as we burn something, essentially with all the heat we release, okay, it kind of is released all in one step. What we're going to find here as we make ATP is we have to go through the fuel that we're going to burn, C6H2O6. You should know that by now that that's glucose. And we're going to take that glucose, and with a whole bunch of steps, we're going to produce a lot of AD, ATP okay, by adding energy onto ADP. And then notice the products of that metabolism. As we make ATP, what do we get out of it as products? CO2, can we get rid of it? Sure we can, we breathe it out. And a little bit of water. So a relationship, and we're going to talk about it, and we call it metabolic water. It's the water we produce in our body because of metabolism. There's actually a few hundred milliliters, a couple hundred milliliters per day of water that you produce that you didn't drink, okay, but you need, that you produce and, and you're going to get rid of. So hopefully here's a relationship you can see between ADP and ATP. Essentially, the difference between those, ADP, adenosine, 1, 2, diphosphate, ATP, adenosine, okay? So it's the adenosine portion is the top piece, okay? the adenine and the ribose molecule. This is adenosine. And then triphosphate. So what did we do to get that? We took a phosphate with energy, okay? attached it to the bottom phosphate. So we put energy in, okay? but if we proceed this direction and we break that off, we get energy out. Okay, so this will be a big part of our discussion, and that's why we refer to it as our energy-containing molecule, not our energy molecule. Okay, if that hopefully makes sense by now. Now, some terms you want to understand, and they're and they're big words. And so, if you say these, okay, when you're at dinner with your family, you sound really, really smart. Okay, when we talk about phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, those sound kind of those sound kind of spooky smart in terms of what we're referring to, but if you think about that, phosphorylation adding a phosphate, dephosphorylation, taking a phosphate away. So when you hear the term a phosphorylation reaction, yet it's not that complicated. You're putting a phosphate onto something or a dephosphorylation, okay, you're taking it from. And so those don't sound as bad once you understand exactly what's taking place. And so that's what we're, that's what we're doing. And so essentially to maintain homeostasis, we have all of our systems of our body coming together in terms of one goal of being able to take in oxygen, using oxygen to make ATP, and getting rid of the water, and getting rid of the CO2 that we produce from that. So we're constantly interacting to take nutrients in, to take oxygen in, to get waste out, get CO2 out. Okay, it's kind of what we're referring to.